Royal Mail Steamer Titanic the 1 to 100 scale model, internally furnished in the bridges, can be visited on www.mitadelmer.it. Now let's go down to see the engine room. The Titanic hull is divided into 16 watertight compartments. The propulsion system occupies 9 of these compartments starting from the 5th forward. The first compartment, counting from the engine room, is occupied by five boilers with one front. The other five compartments are occupied by the 24 boilers with two fronts. Immediately after the boiler room, there are the two alternative engines. In the next compartment there is the low-pressure turbine on the sides of which there are two condenses. Still aft is the room that houses the four current generators. Near the boilers are the carbonyls, the deposits in which the coal is stored with which furnaces are supplied. Boilers are housed in groups of five for each compartment with the exception of the most forward compartment with only four. Titanic's boilers are at flame pipes. In this section we see the main parts. This is the furnace. This is the chamber in focus. This is the tube bundle. This is the smoking chamber. In this section we see a boiler with two fronts. On the front of each boiler there are three ovens for a total, on board, of 159 ovens. Now let's see the operation of a boiler. The ovens, the chambers in focus and the tubes bundles are immersed in the water. Coal is distributed on the grid. The air required for combustion comes from the ash door. This air is pushed into the boiler room by large fans according to the closed chamber system. The ash falls under the grid from where it is removed. It is then entered into a sort of hopper where a seawater stream pushes it off the board. Steam is collected at the top of the boiler from where it is picked up and sent to the machine room. Titanic's boilers work at a pressure of 215 pounds per square inch of 15 kilos per square centimeter. To prevent the pressure from exceeding the design limits on each boiler are mounted the safety valves. These valves, of course, automatically open when the calibration pressure is reached. We enter the engine room where we find, the first of all, two large engines, four cylinder drives that operate the two lateral propellers. These engines have a power of 15,000 horses and a rotation speed of 75 revolutions per minute. This section helps us to explain the principle of functioning. There is a cylinder with inside a plunger at double acting. The alternating movement of plunger turns into a rotating motion thanks to a crankshaft system. A distribution draw connected to an eccentric hinged on the shaft drive can sent to introduce new steam into a chamber and, at the same time, to let out the other chamber of the steam that has already worked. This section indicates the position of the four cylinders of engines installed on the Titanic. The two low-pressure cylinders are located at the ends of the machines. Now, in this scheme, we follow the path of steam. Through the two main valves the steam reaches, the first of all, the high-pressure cylinders Dobo Passan a cylindry dimedia pressioner. And finally in low-pressure ones. The cylinders have gradually increasing diameters because the steam increases in volume and decreases in pressure. To prevent the construction of cylinders with excessive diameters on the Titanic is mounted a low-pressure turbine connected to the central propeller. 
This turbine, which has a power of 16,000 and horses and a rotation speed of 165 revolutions per minute, is fueled by steam leaving the alternative engines. The steam, after working even in the turbine, passes to the main condensers and returns to the liquid state. Two commutation valves are installed on the outlet manifolds, allowing the steam to be sent directly to the condensers by avoiding the turbine. This operation is necessary to eliminate the thrust of the central propeller. Now let's look at one of the alternative machines. This sketch shows the structure that supports the four cylinders, rods and connecting rods, eccentrics with rods that control the distribution drawers. Each drawer has two rods connected each to an eccentric. The different turning corners allow the machine to invert the direction of rotation. In this sketch we see the same machine from above. Now let's go to the low-pressure turbine room on the sides of which are placed the two main condensers. Circulation pumps and switching valves are well visible. Already near the turbine, we see its work in principle. Steam, entering through the nozzles, emits the first crown of mobile blades. Then it passes into a crown, solid with the stator, but with inverted blades, and passes into a second movable crown. And so on until all the crowns are concerned. This generates rotor rotation that provides propeller movement. On the sides there are the condensers that have the purpose of returning the exhausted steam to the liquid state. This draw shows the operating principle of a condenser. Steam enters the upper part. Inside the tubes the seawater circulates. From the bottom comes out the condensate. Of course, titanic condensers are very large. This section shows the extension of the tube bundles. The condensate is extracted from the air pumps. These pumps are driven by steam engines and are characterized by plunges with crossing valves. The condensate, mixed with air, enters the lower chamber and exits the upper chamber. The circulation of the cooling water is ensured by four centrifugal pumps powered by two-cylinder alternating engines. Water enters the center and passes between the blades where, due to the centrifugal force, increases the pressure which of course depends on the speed of rotation of the impeller. On the Titanic are installed four electric generators of 580 horsepower each which in this sketch are represented in plan between the axes of the three propellers. They consist of three-cylinder steam engines powered by steam at a pressure of 185 pounds per square inch coupled directly to a 10-pole dynamo. The rotation speed is 325 revolutions per minute. In this sketch you see the side generators. If you want to know more, Visit the www.mitadelmed.it slash machines site.